In today's news, is Elon Musk secretly in bed with XRP? Is he secretly bullish on XRP? Well, following some recent developments, the sentiment within the XRP community seems to believe that he is. As a result, some older sources have surfaced which seems very coincidental to me. Now, I guess a good place to start, as any would be with this post firstly here, from Ripple CEO Brad Garninghouse actively showcasing his support of Senator Candida and XRP's knight in shining armour, if you will, John Deaton. Deaton has been a relentless advocate for the XRP army, the XRP family and the entire crypto industry. Meanwhile, his competitor, Senator Elizabeth Warren, has tried everything in her power to destroy this industry, spreading misinformation and lies about crypto. Obviously, Brad Garlinghouse enthusiastically endorses John Deaton in his run for Senate and seemingly he is not the only one. This article here from FX Empire titled XRP News Today, SEC appeal looms as Elon Musk and crypto politics drive XRP action. One of the key points here is Elon Musk's endorsement of Deaton thus boosting XRP sentiment. Effectively, this article highlights Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong stating his agreement to Meta Lawman here that Massachusetts residents should vote for John Deaton, especially if you are holding crypto. But you should do so in general because Elizabeth Warren is anti-freedom, thinks the government government should run all financial services and has done enormous harm to this country. And simply put, Elon Musk reported saying yes in agreement, ultimately admitting that he also endorses John Deaton. Now, that is just one recent example of Elon Musk seemingly being bullish on XRP, which is a weak one, I know. But this one right here seems much more convincing to me. Comedically enough, a member of the audience at the town hall discussion in Pittsburgh actually asked Elon Musk about his opinion on XRP. Take a listen. Given how punitive the SEC has been towards crypto under this administration, do you envision the XRP ledger being incorporated into the financial institutions in the future? Well, I, I certainly cannot speak to any in, any specific uh, uh, crypto, uh, but um, you know, I do I do think that uh, the sort of uh, cryptocurrency is a, a, an interesting and probably valuable bulwark uh, against uh, a centralized control. Um, so, you know, I, and uh, this is definitely not an endorsement or lack of endorsement for XRP. Um, but but I do, I do think crypto, uh, by by its very nature, uh, is, um, is it helps uh, with individual freedom. Now, while Elon Musk did not specifically speak on any cryptocurrency, as he stated, the way he danced around that question, being careful not to say anything positive or negative about XRP while looking quite nervous if I may say so myself, this was positively received within the XRP community. Maybe Elon Musk is under NDA, that would be out of the question in my opinion. Now as a result of these two clips I've just shown you, this one here and this one from Elon Musk here, we have some older sources surfacing from Edward Farina here where this interview has resurfaced where people were questioning if he was talking about XRP and XLM as well. Take a listen. Essentially, if, if, if done right, the X would be would, would serve people's financial needs to such a degree that over time it would become I don't know maybe half of the global financial system, wow. or some big number. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the number is, but pretty big. Um, so it, it would be by far the biggest sort of financial institution. If, but, but like I said, not, not not really in the way that people are used to thinking about. Uh, banks mm-hmm. just um just the most efficient database for the thing that is money um they said like least amount of fraud uh, everything's real time um and if it involves money in any way it can be dealt with seamlessly on one one level. Okay. Now, it is more than likely that he was actually just talking about X, the Twitter platform that he bought and renamed himself. But you have to ask yourself, after listening to this video, which you should have just done now, the similarities between what Elon Musk is talking about and what Ripple is trying to achieve with XRP is, you know, 
very similar, if almost too similar as you ask me. One element of this would be in the tokenization market where we have just seen a massive announcement that Ripple is going to be tapping into a $109 trillion market. We will get into that in a moment, but ultimately to me, the Elon Musk rabbit hole can go so much deeper. I'm pretty sure I've seen proof in the past of crypto wallets believed to be Elon Musk's crypto wallets that were buying more and more XRP. Now with Elon Musk endorsing XRP and XRP tapping into the biggest financial markets in the world and with regulatory clarity seemingly on the horizon very, very soon, this is why I am bullish on crypto, why I'm optimistic that every one of us here will be making a lot of money within the next year, which is why I created a free to join Discord server. There's 430 of us right now and growing quickly they are all working towards achieving financial freedom, spreading our knowledge in order to become rich in this cycle. If you want to join, click the link in the description below because crypto is not slowing down and neither is Ripple, especially they are not slowing down at all. Ripple here posted that estimates suggest tokenization could reach $10 trillion by 2030. That's only five years away from now. And crypto exchanges must evolve for the digital asset economy. They posted a list of ways they can and will have to evolve. But once more Ripple here, they are leading by example. This just in, private equity firm Aurum Equity Partners is launching a $1 billion tokenized equity and debt fund on the XRP ledger, an enterprise-focused blockchain closely associated with Ripple. This is a very, very big deal because the global equity market is worth a staggering $109 trillion. It stands as one of the largest untapped opportunities for tokenization and thanks to Aurum, XRP will be tapping into this space. This is how we will see trillions of dollars flood into the XRP ledger, thus setting the price of XRP sky high. And isn't it weird or ironic if you will, or I guess even funny, that the SEC Ripple lawsuit is technically still not over, yet we are seeing more and more bullish developments and partnerships with the likes of Wall Street as well now getting involved issuing ETFs that suggest that this lawsuit effectively is. As Fox Business Journalist Elena Terrett posted recently, the SEC has just included cryptocurrencies in its list of 2025 exam priorities even though there are still no major crypto participants that have registered with their commission. Right now, the only asset that seemingly could interact with the SEC is Bitcoin and Ethereum due to their successful ETF filing. But maybe XRP is also in contention. SEC Chair Gary Gensler himself recently appeared on the UK Bloomberg, bless him, where the TV anchor said what we've all been wanting to say to him out loud for years now, teasing him and laughing at him for his rigid and uptight stance on crypto and that his dismissal seemingly is imminent. I found it hilarious. Take a listen. There is, though, this ongoing narrative that you haven't changed that much. You haven't adjusted much in terms of it is regulation via enforcement. Will that change ultimately? Well, so Do you see laws coming to bear from Congress rather than you having to enforce via enforce to regulate? Caroline, we have benefited for nine decades from robust laws from Congress and rules from various agencies, not just the SEC, but the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, uh, another uh, uh, sig significant and great agency that I was honored to chair to help promote the markets, to protect investors, to promote capital formation and the markets in the middle. And that's what we'll continue to do. One disclosure from former President Trump is that he would fire you, ultimately, unsurprising to you, I'm sure. But also, he's got some plans, purported plans, of course, to, to introduce his own crypto platform, and he's been working on it. What do you make of that? I, I, I'm not going to comment on any one project. So, I, Caroline, I'll let you go to your next question. A lot to get on with, and your term is, what, until June 2026? But will it run until then? Many feel that perhaps not. Now... I would be lying if I didn't say that I took a great deal of pleasure watching this interview probably three times over if I'm honest and then better still to further support the belief that SEC may actually support XRP in their 2025 crypto priority list. We have this interview here with Ripple co-founder Chris Lawson and Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse at the Philadelphia Fed meeting, a very big meeting calling out Elizabeth Warren and Gary Gensler and even stated that the good news is I think 
we're on the twilight of Gary Gendel's reign of terror, so it is finally almost over. I think the approach that Gary Gensler um, pretty much directed, you know, let's just call it uh, who was behind it, uh, Senator Warren, I think, was on a mission, she's literally called this the war on crypto, uh, was on a mission pretty much to destroy the industry, uh, to hobble the U.S. industry uh, by using uh, uh, regulation by enforcement rather than creating clear rules of the road. And what the industry has always asked for is like, just just make the rules clear. Just tell us exactly what those rules are. Uh, we want those clear rules and the industry can thrive. Consumers can be protected. That's not the approach they took, I think, on purpose, because the attacking the industry on these are all securities. It never made any sense. These are not securities. They don't have rights and privileges. Uh, the developing teams that made them don't have obligations. It just it, it's it fits the commodity model fundamentally. And I think they know that. But again, I think it was an attack on the industry to hobble it. Now, what was the effect of that? It just empowered a bunch of sketchier, uh, you know, overseas firms like FTX, which turned out to be a total disaster. So net on net, you didn't protect consumers. You hobbled the U.S. You empowered, you know, in industries in Singapore, uh, in, in London. You didn't create any jobs in Ohio, for example. So it didn't make any sense. And, uh, you know, the good news is I think we're at the twilight of Gary Gensler's reign of terror. It's just about over. And I think whoever wins this election, it's gonna be a fundamentally different thing. This industry can change very, very quickly. And Gary Gensler's dismissal, I pray it be quick and seamless, just like XRP. The bull one is close in my opinion, very close. The election is less than two weeks away now. So ultimately buckle up, do your own research, come chill chat and learn more on the physical server. Again, the link is below, but remember to look short term, think long term, and I'll see you in the next one.